Hi students, welcome to the Chem 300 series. This is Year 11 Chemistry in the first module on Properties and Structures of Matter. We're up to video number seven and it's looking at atomic structure. Now there's going to be a couple of videos on atomic structure because we're going to have to change what our current understanding, when I talk about the current model, I'm probably really meaning our current understanding of the model of the atom. So you may have in your junior years looked at how the ideas about the atom have changed over time and our model has continued to develop on the basis of the observations that we make. Now probably the most important thing to say about the model of the atom is we still haven't yet figured out how to create devices that see atoms. So therefore what we have to do is create a model that helps us to explain the behavior of uh, matter, of chemical substances and we've used the atomic model to help us very much in in this matter um, but what's happened is that it has as a result of different observations changed consistently over time not usually in big ways although sometimes but mostly in terms of how our understanding of this model has needed to be tweaked slightly so to cut to the chase at the moment, we probably have, if I asked you to draw an atom, you would probably draw uh, something like a circle, which represents a nucleus. And inside the nucleus, there would be protons, which would have positive charge, and neutrons, which would be neutral. And then you might draw electrons in particular uh, orbits around this atom. You might even understand that Unlike the Rutherford model, these are not orbiting planets, but they're actually stable shells. Uh, we might call these um, energy levels or uh, energy shells, something like that. And this is the Bohr model. Niels Bohr's model um, worked perfectly for um, hydrogen. And the main reason it worked perfectly for hydrogen is that hydrogen only has one electron. And so it's really easy to look at how it goes from um, level one to level two or level one to level three and so on. So if we call it one, two, uh, the next one out here would be three and so on. Uh, then we get these electrons moving um, up to different energy levels when they absorb energy and then back when they release it. Now, unfortunately, whilst that's a very, very good model for an explanation of most of what we do in chemistry in the junior years, we're going to have to improve it a little if we're going to continue to use an, a, a model of the atom into our senior years. And some of the tweaking of this understanding was um, developed by Erwin Schrödinger. You may also uh, know things like um, Heisenberg, more from Breaking Bad than anything else, but the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is certainly one of the things that applies to our understanding of the distribution of electrons. Now, if we kind of look a little bit more at the structure of the atom in terms of the nucleus, because I will look at electrons and electron configuration in later videos, then the key is isotopes at this point in time, because what we want to do is we want to look at different forms of an element based on differences in mass. And if we use uh, carbon 12 and carbon 14 as an example, again, if I asked you to draw these, you would probably draw a nucleus with six protons and six neutrons. We know that six plus six equals 12, and then two electrons and maybe four electrons uh, orbiting in the first and second energy levels. This would be your carbon 12. If I ask you to draw carbon 14, you might not know what that is, but if I tell you that these are the mass numbers, and we know therefore if there are six protons, which there has to be if it's going to be carbon, then that means there must be eight neutrons in carbon 14. So six protons, but eight neutrons, and of course the electrons are the same. So the only difference, and if, if this part of this molecule, of this atom is what contributes to its electrical interactivity and its reactivity, then this is how it affects its stability. So one of the important things when we're assessing nucle atomic stability is the nucleus, and more specifically, the ratio of protons to neutrons. At this point in time, we need to be aware of the fact that the nucleus 
is where the protons and neutrons are and we need to investigate what's happening in terms of those ratios if we're going to look at stability and we'll do more of this in class and in the next video thanks for watching